Okay, bam, right. <laughs> um, you know, so, you know, the reasoning behind, uh, behind the selection of, uh, of BAM is we felt that, uh, or I did, all of us, and we've always done things, you know, sort of through a consensus, probably the best athlete, hungry, humble, <laughs> uh, and healthy, uh, very strong, great workouts with us, great interview, saw him a number of times, and uh, just off the charts uh, from an athletic standpoint. And I think, you know, we're, we're lacking depth in the front court. Uh, obviously, there's a number of things we want to sort of cover and fill, but when, when he was on the board uh, at 14, we felt I, you know, just compelled to take him. So shot blocker, explosive uh, uh, jumper, leaper, He's a lob threat, runs rim to rim, um, can guard one through five. So from a defensive standpoint, uh, I think that's where the emphasis came at that time. There were other bigs available that had specific skills, but there were other things we didn't like about them. And uh, I think he'll be a perfect fit for us. So, uh, But like... 17 of the other guys, he's 19 years old. <laughs> you know, that's what, that's what this world's about. You know, I think uh, the only, uh, the only four-year guys were picks number 29 and 30. That's where they're heading now with this whole thing. So, but we're, we're really excited about it, you know, and, uh, and uh, to be able to get him. Yeah, it's a wow factor. You know, he's not, you know, he's not 7-1, you know, like Hassan, but he plays like him at, you know, 6'9". And uh, he's an above-the-rim player, for real, while other guys, you know, try to play above the rim. <laughs> and his speed, his quickness, his ability, we put him in situations to guard perimeter guys. Uh, um, obviously, I, I'm, I'm a big fan of what, John does is a, from a coaching standpoint at Kentucky, and so uh, he comes from a great system. And uh, but just also when we sat and talked to him, you know, for an hour, it's just you get sort of blown away by his story and his background and and his motivation and and you know why he is here. I mean, there's a lot of other sidebars to this other than just this incredible athlete. So. Um, we felt he was the best player at that time on the board. Now he's not the best shooter, but you know that all comes. You know when he when when he was in the workout for us, you know he made 30 out of 53s and had a great release. And so all that stuff comes with with young big men. Well, I think, you know, he played 30 minutes a game, you know, average, you know, about you know, 13 points. He shot about 60%. Uh, he's just a very efficient player around the basket, doesn't need the ball. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, what, what he said it, it, what to me was he was a great teammate. He's a wonderful teammate to have. And, and when we talked to him, he had a level of maturity about him and sort of quietness about him that we really liked. And it was all it was all about basketball, so he was sort of a giver, you know. So I saw him play, you know, two or three times in uh, a number of, uh, you know, film sessions, but there were three or four or five guys in the mix there, and, you know, at the end of the night when we got to 14, the consensus was, as we always have done in the past, we take the guy that's on the board, you know. So we, we, we took him because... He was there at, uh, he was actually ahead of the 14th pick. Why? Why? For three and a half million dollars? Yeah. You know, we're not, you know, Mickey, you know, you know you're, you're dropping three and a half mil, you know, on a 50th pick. Uh, let's get real here. <laughs> you know, as a matter of fact, you know, somebody, uh, I don't know who it was. 
you got five million next year, so it's going to be for five million. I, I can remember we get them for five hundred thousand dollars. You get a first round pick, you could buy one. So, uh, you know that has changed. If we felt there was somebody that we really needed, we like our roster. We need we need to fill some some spots. You know now the next step is to go into free agency, obviously, and uh, we feel very comfortable about that. And it's a step by step thing. Uh, what I don't want to do is. You know, just take a second round pick, take a second round pick unless we really like somebody. And there's some pretty good players there, but, uh, you know, it wasn't the fact that, you know, we wouldn't pay three and a half million dollars for the pick or we only have 3.1 left or whatever it is. We just said, we're going to take one player in the draft, you know, unless something else happens via trade. We had a number of other offers that were sort of ridiculous from a one way standpoint against us um, and people what they were asking for. And uh, and we said no to that. So we'd take the the next step, which is to go to free agency, and then and to build from there. And then, you know, through the summer league, uh, you know, try to be the first out of the box on some of these guys in, in our development program. So uh, we feel good, you know, where we are, you know, with our roster. Surprised by any of the moves in the last forty eight hours or so around the league? Jimmy Butler and some guys that have been moved. <laughs> I'm not going to comment on other, you know, other teams, you know, you know, I mean, I think the people who, who know what they're doing in this game do it for a reason. And, you know, a lot of the commentary that follows, uh, you know, deals, you know, that are covered by, you know, people who know what they're talking about, you know, they don't know what they're talking about, <laughs> so they don't know know why. And, and so, if one team is going to rebuild, or if somebody's going to you know trade the third pick for the first pick, you know that's you know that's what they want to do. That's that's their choice. We knew what we had to do. We knew we had to sort of fill a box, a big box. We got Hassan and our backup center right now is UD. <laughs> okay, and our power forward is Luke Babbitt. Okay, he's free, but uh, and James Johnson. So. We felt the need to get uh, to get an athletic big, and so. Um, but as far as the other deals, uh, as far as uh, what those teams felt about what they had to do, some of them seemed to be a little bit strange. But everybody has their motivations, you know. Places, you know, things were all over the place. It's like a big video game now, <laughs> you know. The drafts like a big video game, but when they start calling and saying, "Will you take the fifty first first pick for three and a half million dollars?" You know. I don't. I don't. You know. I mean, we have we have tremendous scouting uh, uh, department. Uh, I mean, you should see it. The amount of information that you have on all these guys. But we do we do follow their social media without a doubt. You know, all the time. But I'm not going to comment on somebody else's social media. But I don't follow it. But it's in a book. It's in a scouting book. Why? Well, Pat, if if did you, uh, do you have did you follow him? Bam, Bam's clean. <laughs> yeah, he's got absolutely. <laughs> he's clean as a whistle. No, there's uh, we do a lot of research. You know, I mean, interviews, background. I mean, just uh, talking to people, watching him. You know, getting up close and personal. Uh, the investigative part of it. You know, that that we all go through to make sure that there's. There's nothing you know wrong in the kid's past. This this guy is he's a gamer and he's hungry, and there was uh, he was clean as a whistle. You know his motivations with uh, and where he come where he came from in Jersey and you know with just he and his mom and in the background that that he's had. He's just uh, I think he's he's going to be a special player and he's going to be a special person to work with. Pat, if nothing should materialize with you guys with one of the very limited number of all-star free agents, would you be content? Would you consider it successful if this summer was merely resigning Deion James, keeping Wayne Ellington, yes. maybe having a little left? Yes. Yeah, I would, if that were to be the case, you know. So, uh, you know, we've been working on that and talking about that. But, but now we can spend, you know, the next 10 days or whatever it is, the next eight days, you know, uh, you know, getting that together. How much of a plan do you have at this point? Pat? What's that? How much of a plan for July 1 do you have at 
We have a plan. <laughs> we have a plan A and a plan B. There's no D, E, F, or G. <laughs> you know, so we feel good about about the plan. You know, so uh, you never know what's going to happen in free agency. We have great respect for the two guys, uh, three guys, four guys that we have that are free agents and uh, that helped. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens on July the first. It's always it's always uh, a pretty exciting time. Given that it's just so different this year, the Morris Rams against Jordan, mm-hmm. it just changes so much, and things right. are going to happen pretty fast. Are you hopeful that you're going to have at least some idea that first night? We hope we we hope that we'll have some information. You know, the first night. Uh, it's not like it was in 2010 where you had a nine-day moratorium and guys were flying all over the place. You know, taking meetings and. And that was, it's incredible. I mean, the itinerary that we had and the number of players that we you know, flew around in 36 hours to see. And so um, last year, a lot of the business, you know, was done quickly over the phone with a lot of these players. And, uh, and, and some of the contracts were sort of out of whack. I don't, I don't know if you're going to see that this year. I'd be surprised because, you know, from my experience with uh, – with talking to a number of teams this year, they're, those contracts are already trying to be dumped. And so I think there, there might be a little bit more uh, discipline in, in, in how, how teams go about that whole process just because there's a lot of money in the system or there may be a lot of money in the system. But, you know, the major, major guys are most likely going back for the most part, you know, so... You know, there might be a couple of, of very, very good players that uh, that might be available, but from what we understand, most of the, the great ones will, will resign with their teams. And I can I can understand why they would. How, how big is the gap right now between the Warriors and everybody else? How easy is it for everybody in the playoffs? Well, Cleveland ran through everybody in the playoffs too until they ran into them. And uh, continuity in this game today is, is, is going to be very difficult, I think, to keep a team together for a long time. I mean, you can go back, it's like apples and oranges, and talk about the Lakers and the Celtics. You know, we that team was together for 12 years. Same players come back every year. There's, We got one free agent. I think Mitch Kupchak we got in 1981. He was like the first free agent in the new CBA back then. And, and so that team was together. You know, and the Celtics was they were together for nine years, and so if if Golden State can keep those guys together for nine or ten years, there's going to be somebody who's going to catch up to them. It will happen, and uh, or it might not. You know, that's that's what you know. You're not a dynasty in three years. You know, you're a hypothetical dynasty because of 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 how good they are now, how good they're going to be in the future, and and how quickly somebody else can can catch them at the right time or an injury or some maybe they don't sign somebody or you know if you if you project down the road with that team or some other team that might have a payroll that could be 30 million dollars into the tax I mean it starts getting pretty punitive but right now it doesn't look like <laughs> there's many teams that are that are very close to them they built something special Pat, I know you told us in late April you wanted Dion and James Johnson back. Are you able to say at this point whether you want to bring Wayne back on the contract and Luke Babbitt, or would that depend on no, how things play out? I'm not going to talk about just right now. Okay. Barry, you're getting too deep. Mm-hmm. I'm going to read your column tomorrow. And, you know, I'll read <laughs> I don't want to. Uh, you know, I just spent, you know, like I spent two weeks on like you know 300 college players. Okay, I, I might even mention one of those guys in free agency, and I don't want to do that right now. So, but. But I will tell you this right now: we have great respect for what Dion and what James did, and Luke, and you know, obviously what uh, what Wayne did last year. So, you know, we're concerned, but we're also very confident. You know, when you go into this process.